Hey guys, welcome to Vlogmas Day 6. I'm actually pretty impressed that so, so far I have been able to do six days. It's been a little crazy at times and there have been times that I have cut it very close, almost to the next day, but I have done it and I am very, very proud of myself because it's a lot of work, and especially with four little ones running around. But I'm glad I've been able to do it. It's been fun. Today's vlog is going to be a, a pregnancy update all about my first trimester. And I'm excited to share this with you guys. I am feeling better now that I'm in my second trimester. Still not super great, but better. So that has been great. Um, so you guys saw my video where I found out I was pregnant. Literally the next day, all of my pregnancy symptoms started happening, which is unlike any of my other pregnancies. Usually I don't start having symptoms until um, I'm eight weeks along. And this baby was like, bam, I'm here and you are definitely pregnant. And at first I, I honestly thought I was having twins for a while because of how, um, how, like how intense my symptoms were and how sudden they had started. Um, like I had said in that video, I had, um, already was having, like, I could smell really well. And that's a huge inclination that I'm pregnant. So, um, I could smell really well and I was severely nauseous. Um, I was not throwing up. That's really nice, but I was so nauseous. So I couldn't eat like anything. Um, and food that I loved, I hated. And it was these random foods that I started loving. And I was like, what in the world? Cause it wasn't food that I was used to eating. So with the foods that like I stopped eating that I had loved, anyone that knows me knows that I am a big sweet eater. I love, love, love sweets. Uh, more than I love like salty and savory and that stopped. I hated anything sweet um, and I'm barely getting back in where I can eat some sweets. Um, most of the food that I like is salty or savory and that's um, pretty much all that I like is salty and savory and that's all this baby wants is salty and savory. And so I've been eating things like um, bacon, which I can only eat when I'm pregnant. Don't know why. It's just how my body is and um, leaning more towards like chips and potatoes I have been loving potatoes and something and uh, I was no longer able to drink tap water I love water and I don't mind tap water but I could not stand the taste of the tap water it literally disgusted me and made me want to puke and so we are having to buy water bottles because <laughs> I cannot tolerate tap water so there's, that's some fun food things that I have not been able to eat and that I have been turning to and liking instead. So that was an adjustment, but I was like so, so sick. It was such a struggle to do anything um, at all, even like just basic feeding my kids and getting ready for the day. I don't think I got ready like very often at all, maybe once or twice my whole first trimester because I felt so ill. And because I wasn't eating, I was also um, lightheaded and I couldn't stand for very long. Um, and I was severely exhausted. Like I've been tired before and it was like I was pulled like three all nighters or something though. I would go to bed. This was also was different for me. I never go to bed early. I am a late nighter, late riser. That is what I love. I've loved it for forever, but I was going to bed at like nine or 10 out of pure exhaustion and loving it and getting up at like seven or eight and starting my day over again. And I loved it so much. Uh, my body just needed it. And I probably would still be that way, but we've been dealing with sicknesses and children staying up late. And so now my schedule is just a little bit more off, but that was like a totally new symptom. None of my other pregnancies were like that. And it was not very fun. Um, I started dealing with like headaches towards the end of my first trimester. Um, they were pretty bad, like every single day. And when you're pregnant, there's nothing you can take and Tylenol does nothing for migraines or headaches. And so I was like, there's nothing I could do. And so that was very fun. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. I, it was kind of like the typical, um, what a lot of women typically experience i was experienced but it was kind of like the first time for me even though this is my seventh pregnancy 
I didn't experience a lot of this. I'd get nauseous, um, but it usually would come in like waves. And this was like completely different where it was just like pure nausea and I wasn't eating like ever, it felt like. And if I was, it was just like a little bit here and there. And then I was done. I just, I couldn't stomach food at all. Thankfully, again, I did not throw up. Um, but yeah, that's kind of what it was. It was not a fun first trimester at all. And I was very surprised because it did not follow any of my other babies. Something else that was different and new was I switched OBs for my last um, provider. And I really like this new OB. He seems really great and willing to work with me and just listen to my needs and concerns, which is really, really good. Um, and he also, because we had lost our son 17 weeks gestation, um, he, that was kind of like a red flag to him um, because it's not likely that you'll experience a second trimester miscarriage. And so he actually, um, said that I might possibly have like an autoimmune disease, uh, that could have caused that. And so we were able to get that test run and find out I didn't have that, but he started me on like a baby aspirin to make sure that it wasn't like a clotting issue that was causing me to miscarry and late term or late term miscarry, early term stillborn. Um, I feel like I'm talking so fast and I'm so out of breath. Pregnancy does this to you and being a little congested does as well. So it's just, I will I'm gonna try to talk slower. Um, so he started me on some baby aspirin and I was taking that. Um, so, um, because we lost baby at 17 weeks and then my, and then Alvin was born at, um, 34 weeks with my water rupturing early, um, I'm considered high risk. And so he sent me to maternal fetal medicine, which you might hear me say MFM, and that's just abbreviated. Um, he sent me there so they could monitor the baby and me a little bit more than he can. And, um, uh, they can also run more extensive testing as well. And so it was kind of fun. I started seeing them and I see them every two weeks until, I'm trying to think, I think they said 24 weeks. I'll see them every two weeks until 24 weeks. And they are checking to make sure my cervix isn't dilating. Um, they're checking on baby to make sure baby's growing well and having enough fluid. Um, just more in depth than just what your typical OB would do. And they were the ones that actually ran the test to see if I had that autoimmune disease. I don't remember what it's called. It was quite a big name. Um, I'll try like looking it up maybe and putting it in the description below. But uh, it's basically where your body, I think it says like your body clots too much. Anyways, um, uh, but I didn't have that. And then they tested something else and that came back negative as well. Um, but yes, yeah, so I haven't seen them every two weeks since around my first or second um, prenatal appointment. And so that's been just a, kind of a different experience than all the other ones. Cause I've never, when I was pregnant with Alvin and in the hospital, I saw MFN because you see them to make sure baby's okay. Um, in the hospital, but before that I had never even knew that there was an like MFN that existed. So it's kind of cool. Um, they're able to see things a little bit more clear on their ultrasounds, but so far baby's been looking great. So that's really good. I don't think there's any other updates other than I go to MFM now. This pregnancy is completely different in some ways than all my other ones. Like I said, all the um, stuff that I was feeling, all the all the pregnancy symptoms that I was feeling, I did not have with all of my babies. And so that was very, very new and very different. And then also being having um, also needing to see maternal fetal medicine has been very different as well. Not a bad experience, uh, just different. It just adds another appointment into the books. Um, but yeah, it's been, I am now in my second trimester and I am feeling better. I will do a second trimester update soon. I go in on tomorrow for my appointment. And so we will, um, I will maybe do a video out of that, doing a second trimester update. Um, we are not finding out the gender with this baby again. We haven't with our last two. So when we lost Brett at 17 weeks, I delivered him and then we found out he was a little boy. And then with Alvin, we didn't find out, even though I was in the hospital and it was, could have been very easy because everyone can look and tell you what your baby is. We did not find out. So this baby so far, I am good with waiting 
and um, just seeing what this little bundle joy is once we have them. And so that'll be a fun surprise gender reveal um, when this little one comes. So it's fun. I'm due in April at the end of it. Um, hopefully at the end of April, and this is not another preemie baby. That is what I'm keeping my fingers crossed for. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Please give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, comment down below. If you're new, please subscribe. Um, and again, I'm proud of myself for doing this vlogmas so far for six days. So thank you guys. Bye.